Yo, peep the scenery. Your boy's away from the office. BBL Drizzy. BBL Drizzy. I feel like I could sing to that song. Recently talking about sometimes when people cheat on you or if they do you wrong and then uh, one person commented and said oh so we waste being the best version of ourselves and on someone and then they cheat and I thought about that and I was like nah you didn't waste the best version of yourself you mm -hmm. did exactly where you, what you're supposed to do and if you are being a good woman or a good man to keep another person faithful you're doing it wrong that's not how it works you cannot keep a man you can't keep a woman it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter how, how much money you got, how great your sex is, how much you cook, how much you uh, pay for everything. It does not matter. You cannot keep a person that does not want to be kept. In my spiritual journey, I got to a place of releasing outcomes with people. I release the outcome. I don't, I'm not married to an outcome with anybody. I'm going to experience you however long this lasts. That could be two years or 20 years. It, it just depends on us. But I'm releasing the outcome. And that gives me freedom to just be. So I can genuinely be myself and I don't have to worry about the outcome. It's going to be whatever it's going to be. Sitting here trying to perform to keep a person, man, that's a short trip to a bad place. Swear. How many of you had that experience where you were extra good to somebody and they still left? So you being the best version of you is not for someone else. It is for you. I'm the best version of me for me. I feel great when I'm the best version of me. And I feel like hot garbage when I'm not. Mm. This concept of, of us wasting ourselves on someone, I, I, don't, I don't subscribe to that. No, I'm, if a person cannot receive uh, the goodness that I bring to the table, okay. Oh, that's just not my person. That's what that means. And I'm okay with that. I'm not mad at that person because they couldn't recognize me. Life is really different when you're able to release outcomes and then not get into relationships performing to keep the other person. Yo, for real, man. Forget the outcome. We're only worried about the income over here. You know what I find wild? That people will be infatuated with you and hate you at the same time. Like, they will closely watch and monitor your life or even get close to you. And what starts off as admiration turns into a secret obsession, which then leads to a bunch of hate, envy, and jealousy. And some would think that only celebrities and high profile individuals deal with this. It's not true. Like a person can be obsessively drawn to your personality, your style and the way that you dress, your looks, build or shape, your relationship or marriage or even just the way other people love and respect you. And they start to develop that hate energy because deep down, they wish they possessed those qualities themselves. And that pretty much turns them into a snake that's ready to strike any chance they get. It's funny because they'll literally tell the public or the people closest to y'all how cool you are, how dope you are, how close mm, y'all are. I swear. But in your absence, when your name is brung up in a positive light, their energy seem to shift towards the negative, or you'll usually hear about some smart comment or foul remark that they made about you. Or the countless amounts of times that they've tried to sabotage different things that you've had going on and then try to hide their hand like they had nothing to do with it. Mm. And when you do approach them about something that they did, they either play stupid or they play dumb. And the craziest part about it all is that if you never cut them off, they will continue to be close to you and they will continue to obsessively watch and monitor your life. But yeah, stay aware of who's around you, who's in your inner circle, and always pay attention to what your gut is telling you about a person. And like always, let's go. Bro, sound like he was describing Drake. They didn't know what you carried. And they treated you like you were common. And God wanted them to treat you that way because he wanted you to see who they were. Because nothing exposes character more than the way you treat people you don't think you need. If you knew what I carried and what God was doing, you'd latch on. But God said, I'm going to hide you in plain sight to show you who your real crew is and who the fake ones are. If you are with someone that is not aware of their emotions, someone that doesn't have emotional intelligence, awareness, or regulation, 
get ready because you are going to live your life in a constant state of unnecessary stress, which leads to illness, which leads to disease. And most people don't understand the seriousness of this. Because if you are constantly in a space where your partner is triggered or angered or responsive or reactive or jealous or defensive, then what happens to you, you are getting a message very clearly and that message says, hey, psst, it is not safe for you to speak your truth. Because if and when you do speak your truth, you are going to get a reaction. And that reaction and that energy is going to cause you to quiet down and never speak your truth. Well, get ready because after 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 years, your body is going to start to swell up mm. with inflammation. Because the body is storing all of that energy that you've been afraid of letting go of. And by the way, take ownership of it because that fear is yours that fear is yours no matter how deep and dark and powerful their reaction is you can still speak your truth and yet the reality is is as your body gets inflamed you start opening your body up to unnecessary illness and disease what other people yeah, think real. is their business and their problem if you're concerned about what other people think you're probably concerned with getting acceptance from those people twisting yourself into some sophisticated knot to please them. That is an ugly way to live. You're better off being free. What other people think is their business, not yours. And if people like me, great. If they don't like me, great. Because either way, mm -hmm. it's their problem, not mine. You gotta take the good with the bad. You wanna hear something fucked up about life? Life will allow you to fall head over heels for somebody who in turn falls head over heels for somebody else. Life will allow you to fall deeply in love with a person who in turn falls deeply in love with someone else. Life will allow you to think that you're chasing a person for the sake of love just to find out the reason they were running is because that they were chasing somebody else. A man who chases two rabbits often catches none. And here's a secret that I found out about life. In the process of chasing a person, we often lose ourselves. So in turn, we chase that person, and we, then we chase the person who we used to be. Mm. A man who chases two rabbits often catches none. So in the process of chasing this person, you'll end up losing yourself. And when it's all said and done, you'll end up losing them. <clears throat> Yo, that's real right there. How many people do you know going through that right now? You know, chase somebody, got their heart broke, want to find themselves, that ain't working either. Now they just lost. That's crazy, ain't it? Hey. <laughs> Y'all better listen to what Martin Luther said. Jesse, stop chasing them hoes. No disrespect to what y'all got going on. I've been trying to find good people for so long. I'm tired, bro. Mm. I ain't gonna lie, bro. Sometimes, like, late nights, I just cry like a motherfucker. Like, that's the honest to God truth. Like, you know, I'll be lying to you and tell you that I didn't have days where... You know, it just got extremely heavy. You know, you kind of just shut down and take a moment to yourself to kind of regroup. I mean, I'm trying to do my best, you know, and I, and I think the weight to try to live up to everybody's perfect expectation of me has been really, really heavy for a long time. I ain't gonna lie, I'm going through a lot of shit right now. I'm going through a lot of shit. People really be going through it. You never really know. I feel like one of the best forms of love is to meet someone who isn't really where they want to be in life. And yet you still love them despite what they have or what their situation is. 
the fact that you didn't care about them having the most money or you didn't really care about them having the nicest car or the biggest house or even having the best career none of that really mattered to you all you cared about was were they a good person does this person have goals for themselves will this person be a positive addition to my life because it's easy to want somebody who's already a finished product oh they got the nicest house oh they got the nicest car they got a lot of money oh that's cool you can love me when i'm up but if i hit rock bottom are you gonna still love me the same and so if you can love somebody who is at rock bottom or somebody who is trying to get themselves to a better place i feel like that says a lot about you and that shows how genuine of a person you really are. And I really believe that that's one of the biggest forms of love is when you can love somebody who isn't really where they want to be just yet. For somebody to love you, stick by your side, and to care about you despite your situation, and that shit a blessing. Yo, for real, y'all. Y'all need to go play uh, 50 Cent, 21 Questions are some signs that a person has secret animosity towards you or they are threatened by you. I turn this into a series, so here's part one. When they don't acknowledge you, the people who pull this stunt, I like to call them the Helen Kellers because they will act as if they can't see or hear you. Uh -huh. Whenever they enter the room, and there are other people in the room, including you, they will speak to, greet, and acknowledge everyone except you. Even if they enter the room and you're the only person in the room, They'll act as if they don't see you, as if you don't exist, as if you're not there. Oh, they see you, they see you. Or let's just say it's a group setting and you guys are having a group conversation. Everyone is talking, but it's your turn to talk or you act like they don't hear you. They won't acknowledge you at all. They either won't acknowledge you or they'll dismiss you. They'll try to dismiss what you're saying. They may even go out of their way to turn their head when you speak, turn their back, roll their eyes, cough, yawn, or do something to try to get the attention off of you and back onto them. They even interrupt and cut you off. Or they may even leave the room. They also won't make eye contact with you. Their whole goal is to make you feel as if you were invisible, as if you don't exist. To make you feel unwelcomed, unwanted. Purposely leave you out and won't include you. They want you to feel alone, as if you don't matter. But the truth is, you do matter. And your light is so bright that it triggers their insecurities. You have an anointing on you that irritates their inner demons. They have hidden animosity towards you, and they are secretly intimidated by you. They are threatened. They pull this kind of stunt. They think they're bothering you. But in fact, what they're really showing is how miserable they are. They're really showing how bothered and threatened they are by you. Presence in your light. Don't let the bother bother you. Yo, not gonna lie, so much hate and animosity that goes on between women. I don't know if he needs to hear this, but do not worry. You heard me. Do not worry. Don't do it. Did you know that is a command from God? Yep. That wasn't an option. That was an order from our Heavenly Father. Do not worry do not worry about what you will eat what you will drink what you will wear is life not more than food and the body more than clothing I love the part where he says where jesus said by the way look at the birds in the air they neither sow nor reap and your heavenly father feeds them how much more value are you than they. Mm. How much more valuable are we than the birds, y'all? Do not worry. Don't do it. Don't do it. And the minute you just take a deep breath and you're just like, okay, Abba. Okay. I trust you. Okay, Jesus. I trust you. You know, and he says to cast all your burdens on him, cast all your worries on him, for he cares for you. And he does, he does. And out of nowhere, guys, once you completely surrender, 
all of your worries to him. He says, seek first the kingdom and everything else will be added unto you. I am a witness to that. That is so true. So true. <laughs> I cannot explain to you how he just out of nowhere provides, 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 provides. And all I had to do was focus on Jesus. Seek first the kingdom and give everything else to him. So do not worry. All right. Don't do it. Hey, man, I truly believe that Jesus, the Christ is within us all. And to give yourself to Jesus is to give yourself to yourself. You know, like you can't be negative and, and give yourself to yourself. No, you're tearing yourself down at that point. You have to be thinking positive thoughts. You have to literally live for yourself, you know, positively, not in a negative way. most dangerous person you can have around you is a person who has secret animosity towards you. Like, what's that in your heart to be able to have that much ill will towards somebody? That much hate or that much jealousy towards someone? They give the most backhanded compliments, backhanded congratulations, and you just never really know what their heart's intent. If you fail, that person would be able to sleep good at night. If something happened to you, they would probably silently celebrate your downfall or your failure. That secret animosity is devious. What makes it even more dangerous is that the person who has secret animosity towards you will usually try to get close to you they will usually try to pretend that they're your friend they'll have that dagger just waiting to stab you in your back waiting to corrupt whatever it is that you built and that's sad that's that blow you never see coming i don't understand it it's too much love in this world to receive and it's too much love to give if you just hate a person simply because they're successful or because they have something great about themselves or they have a gift or you see their value if you just simply hate a person for that they ain't did nothing to you that screams self-hate that screams self-love a friend or family People just evil. who becomes an enemy after a little misunderstanding has been an enemy the whole time. They were just pretending. So if you know you got friends, you got family out there, y'all know y'all got into a confrontation and you were just speaking your truth and they took it all overboard, threatening you, calling y'all out your name, just taking it way too far, acting like they just hate you throughout that mix. Watch out for those. Yeah. Because they got a secret hate to you. They really don't like you. It's just something they need from you. They just using you. You got to watch out for those kind of people. They out there. So pay attention to those small arguments. Especially, you know, you speaking your truth. Just being honest. Still showing love to that individual. While you conversating through anger. But it's still ways you still show love. And get it off in a different kind of tone where you're angry. So I do understand that. But they take it way too far. And you like, dang, what you really? You know what I'm saying? If you know in your heart they don't look too much, you might want to take that step back. Relax a minute. Distance yourself. Pay attention to these small signs. I'm just going to let you know I'm going to keep remaining, doing the same, informing y'all how things going out here. You're going to want to go. Yeah. Everyone loves differently, though. Everyone's on different emotional levels, you know what I mean? So, like he said, the best thing is probably to just fall back a little bit. You know what? You acting a little too funny. It's, I see this really, really messing with you. I'm going to just take a step back and let you figure this out. I'll still be here whenever you get it figured out, if you ever do. Go ahead and add this one to your favorites. You might want to come back to it. Check this out. Once you understand the power of your words, he you won't just say anything. Once you understand the power of your thoughts, he you won't just think anything. But once you understand the power of your presence, he you won't just be anywhere. Think about that. Keep mm. doing what you're doing. We are all being judged by someone who isn't even close to having their stuff together. Yo, very true. Sometimes no answer is the answer that you need. You out here looking for a sign, looking for clarity and closure when God already gave you the answer that you needed. You just too stubborn to accept it. Sometimes you got to accept what God allows and keep it pushing. Now take that and apply it as needed. Mm. Keep it pushing. One of the worst things you can do is try to change someone who doesn't see a problem with their own actions. That's where you're going wrong. They don't see nothing they doing is wrong. 
So that's over here driving you crazy. Because you're trying to explain yourself. You're trying to get your point across. You're trying to get them. Hey, for real, y'all think an evil person really thinks that they're evil? But they probably think they're, they're the best, most righteous person out there. And they're doing the best, most righteous thing possible. But in our eyes, that's evil. You don't understand. They ain't doing nothing but bringing stress upon you. You got to quit that. If they don't see a problem with their own actions, you got to let that go. That mean they love what they're doing. And especially if it's hurting you, causing harm to you, frustration to you, stress to you, worrying to you, anxiety to you, you have to let that go. You got to learn to move forward from certain things that you can't change. Got to learn to let it go. One thing that I understood about life, I never tried to change anybody. I just try to change the way I react to it. That helped me out a whole lot. Facts. Growing up, I used to wonder why people were always so mean to me, would bully me, would talk about me, would just want to put me down and hurt my feelings. And even as an adult with my family, my friends, weird random people would just want to make me feel less of myself. and. I saw a video and said they envy you and then all caught my attention. I'm like, oh, okay, probably my for you page, I guess it's for me. And he said, it's not the car you drive. It's not the money you have. It's not anything. It's what you possess in your soul that they know they can never fucking have. And maturing, going through an awakening, I've realized that's why. <laughs> it's always been what I couldn't see. It's what they saw that they knew for a fact I could not fucking see and I didn't see. The fact that I'm so caring, I'm so beautiful, I'm a fucking light. I light up every room I walk in. Everybody loves me any and everywhere I go. And I could go on and on. I'm just not gonna do that because that's not my point of the video, but don't try to make sense of what other people are doing to you, how other people treat you. It's not you. They're mad as fuck because they want to be you and they can't be you. They can't go to Walmart, Sears, whatever the fucking store case may be, and buy what your soul possesses, what God of the universe has blessed you to be capable of doing. And, and, and the way that others love you, the way you just light up a room, the way that everywhere you go, they like, damn, who the fuck is that? You can't buy that. You can't order that off Shein. You can't order that off Amazon. Baby, that is God given. Don't let a bully, an insecure family member, a jealous ass friend, any count for fucking nation. Don't let anybody on this earth, no matter who. I got to stop reading the captions before they talk because the captions just said all the wrong words. I'm like, what? They are what they are, their status, their title, whatever the case may be, make you feel less of yourself because they feel less of their self because they don't possess what you do. They don't hold the way that you do on this earth because they, they don't light up a room the same way you do. That ain't got shit to do with you. Keep shining. Because what Jesus say? Baby in the dark, I'm going to shine bright as a motherfucker. Keep shining bright. Keep shining your light on them dark spirits and dark souls. The world needs more light. The world doesn't need any more darkness. They want to dim your light down because... Shit. Oh, yeah. You are that son on, to me right now. And they don't like that because they're not like that and don't know why they, you know, hate you the way they do, but who the fuck cares? It's not your problem, baby. <laughs> Shit. You see the way I look? I don't look like this in public. I have wigs on, mascara, different clothes. This is me. It's five, six days a week. Outside the one day I go to work. I don't look like this and I still get the looks. I still get the... Bitch, I'm bald head as hell, okay? With some bleached ass hair. And I still get the looks. It's not what this looks like. It's not what this looks like. It's not anything else but the soul I possess, the light I possess, the way that I just, hey, how you doing? Mm-hmm. I don't care what you look at me like. I don't care how you treat me. I hope you have an amazing day. I have friends out here still hating me. I got family out here hating me. I send you the uttermost love. I could never. I could never just send off dark energy. Why? 
Why? Life is hard as it is anyway. It's hard enough as it is anyway. Why would I make your life harder because I feel some type of way? Which I don't, personally. I'm just saying. Why would I want to transmute dark energy that I feel in the inside to you? And I know it's hard over here. Mm, might be hard on your end, too. So why would I want to make you feel any worse than you already do or you possibly could feel? That's because they're, they're, they're fucked up, okay? And that's not your concern. That's not your problem. That's a them problem. But you keep healing. You keep doing what you're doing. You keep being the light that God designed you to be. Don't worry about these weird-ass people. It, trust me. They think that you're weak. They think that you're not capable of blocking out their weird ass. Girl, fuck them. Girl, boy, whoever see this. Girl, fuck their weird ass, okay? You can't get mad because you was a, a yellow light bulb and I'm a white one. Get your weird ass on, okay? <laughs> I just felt the need to say that. So hopefully this message reach, reaches who it was supposed to. I love you guys. Wishing the uttermost love and happiness and light on you, on you guys' life. Bye. Answer me this question, y'all. Why is there so much hate and animosity amongst women? There might be some against men. It's just not out there as much. Uh, yeah, you won't see that as much. But women, they openly do it and hate on another woman for absolutely no reason. Why not even know the girl? I don't know the reason. And most women seem to not know the reason either. So, do y'all know the reason? Let me know down below. The only reason I took it so personal, because what you've done to me... I would have never done to you. And that hurt my feelings. But see, I had to learn emotional intelligence, learning how to control my emotions and my feelings towards people. Because people talk can really dictate your actions or how you react to certain things. And I couldn't allow that anymore. I had to set my boundaries. And why I set my boundaries played a big factor on who I was and how I reacted to things. Because if they stepped across my boundaries, that let me know that at the end of the day, they didn't care about what I had going on in the first place. See, it was a little things that I had to teach myself in order not to take things so personal so I can allow people to get into my feelings. And then when they get in my feelings, they have type of this controlled mechanism of a person when you allow them to get into your emotions and feelings. And I couldn't allow it anymore. So I didn't want to take things so personal no more. I didn't let people's words dictate who I am as a character. So I learned to calm and stay in a peaceful state of mind on purpose. And that's certain things you just have to do in this world. So learn not to take things so personal. Learn emotional intelligence. Learn people just talk just to get under your skin for no reason. Don't fall for these tactics. Keep that peace within yourself. And don't let nobody take that away from you. Facts. If you ain't demanding your worth and your value at this point in your life, then what are you really doing? There is no more time for letting people come in and out of your life and treat you how they want to treat you and run over you and mishandle your heart. You got a heart of gold and it's time to guard that. It's time that you know your worth and stand on that. Because if you don't stand for something, you will fall for anything. Don't be gullible. Mm. I like that, y'all. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And with all the negativity and stuff going on around the world right now, it's nice to get some of these spiritual TikToks in. Yeah, guys, if you like the content, don't forget to subscribe, turn your notification bells on, and until next time, YouTube, peace. Baby,